pregame.com. I'm Vegas Runner here with Brian Leonard. Going to break down Michigan State, Notre Dame. Brian's got a selection for this game, and I have a strong opinion as well. Uh, Notre Dame opened up four, minus four at Chris, minus five and a half at Olympic. They've kind of met in between, and we're now looking at uh, Notre Dame anywhere from four and a half, five point favorite. Total opened up 51, not much action. It's 51 and a half right now. Back when the Golden Nugget opened the lines back in July, they had Dame as high as six and a half. Hilton opened up the future line on this game at Notre Dame minus eight and a half. So with that said, where's the value? I think the value is on the over. I think if you watched uh, the Irish play last week, <laughs> yeah. you realize their defense isn't nearly as strong as uh, their recruiting would say it is. And it's funny because the Irish seem to play these two back to back every year. So you have to know the coaches being conference affiliates can learn something from each other, can know the, know the tendencies of each of the other coaches. So I, I think uh, the over is the way to go. And if you go back to the last seven meetings, they've averaged 60 points per game. Some of them have gone to overtime. Right, they've been right. in a lot of tight contests. But, uh, you know, the, the Irish could put some points on the board. The only thing that's hurt the Irish this year offensively is their turnovers. turnovers. They move the ball on everybody. So I, I think they'll be able to control the turnovers a little bit, put some points on the board. And, and one of the handicapping angles I look at is when teams step up in class. And you take a look at Michigan State, they just played Youngstown State and Florida Atlantic. You know, exactly. No, nothing against either one of those programs, but, you know, they're not the Irish. It's a step up in it competition, step up. for and sure, so for sure. So the defenses looked really good. Well, they're not going to look nearly as good against the Irish here. And I think the line's a little bit... A little bit low. I'm going to look take uh, the over in this game. Where, you know, South Florida may not be the best program in the country, but they showed they had something. And last week, you know, they had to go into Ann Arbor and play the first night game there. So Notre Dame's been pressed a little bit already, I think, compared to Michigan State, which is going to be right. more or less their first real game of the season. Historically, the road team's done well in this series. Yep. Seven and three straight up. That's the only thing that I really see giving Michigan State any kind of advantage. Otherwise, I love Notre Dame in this spot. And I know a lot of people out there are saying, Notre Dame, are you crazy? Notre Dame fumbled four times last week. They lost three of them. They had two interceptions. In week one against South Florida, they fumbled four times, lost two of them, and three interceptions. I think they'll start to minimize these mistakes. I think we're going to see a regression to the mean as far as fumbles go. Um, maybe in, if they do fumble the ball, I think they're, they're, the chances of them recovering it will get greater. You know, you're not supposed to lose three or four fumbles when it hits the ground. It's a coin flip. 50, 50. Exactly. Um, more importantly, I think Michigan State's overrated. I'm sorry. I think they came into this season with last year's record um the reason why they're a top 15 team you know in the ap usa today both has them top 15. i don't um i, I turn in a ranking every week for the game and today um i have them hovering near the 20 spot um i have notre dame in my top 20 and people are probably laughing at that but i look at the talent um not just what the perception is right. Michigan State, I love Kirk Cousins at quarterback, but here's a guy who lost his favorite target, his wide receiver, his tight end, who was another favorite target, lost both tackles, and lost his center. And if you look at last year, they needed three touchdowns in the fourth quarter to come back against Purdue and Northwestern. And when they played a team like Bama and Iowa, they got destroyed. It was four games that they won. They went 4-0 by less than a touchdown was the win margin in those close games. This team very easily could have had a lot worse record than they did when it was all said and done. I think they're overrated. I think Dame's underrated. To me, that's the recipe for a bet. Well, I can't argue on that point, but um, something, a few, just a few things that I look at. You, you say there were four and games decided by seven or seven or less. A lot of times you look at a team like that, and that's a team that knows how to win. Yeah, that's true. And that's so that, very that's true. a concern. And then if you take a look at the Irish, the last nine games against Michigan and Michigan State, they're two and seven straight up. And uh, you know the visitor in the series eight and one and one against the spread. 
Um, I'm not sold on Michigan State because they haven't played anybody yet. But uh, the one thing you do have to say about Notre Dame, and I do like the coach, Kelly's now 14-6 ATS off of a loss going all the way back to his days at Central Michigan 2005. So, you know, they did lose last week in a game that, you know, I had the Irish. I had the Irish last week, and I just think they'll bounce back. But um, I, I do have concerns about the Notre Dame defense. Yeah, are you surprised at how poorly the defense has played since they've returned 80% of their sack leader, their tackle leader, and their tackles for loss leaders from last year. 80% has returned on that defense. So you would think a huge improvement over last year. We've seen more or less the opposite. There's a lot of times when people look at returning starters, and you see a lot of it in the, the smaller conferences, the WAC, the Sun Belt. You might get a lot of guys back, but just because you have them back doesn't, doesn't mean they're, mean they're great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Especially well, in the best schools, why aren't they going pro? Yeah, you would think. You, know you, know, I mean? you, know, the, you don't the see Irish too many you know, well, four-year seniors playing on the best college basketball teams in the nation. There you go. But one of the problems you have with, with the Irish is their enrollment is so hard to get in. Yeah. They really hurt themselves. At Stanford's very similar I don't similar think my, my, my grades yeah. yeah, would have got I me into I think I just Dame. missed out on getting into Stanford. So <laughs> you could have gotten the Dame. Akron took me. Well, who knows? But, uh, yeah, that's something you have to look at. So it's always an athlete thing. Some of the better athletes, you know, a lot of, a lot of them inner city kids, and they're not able to go to school yeah. there. Because, so. I mean, they only let up 20 points a game last year, you know, Notre Dame. And like I said, they returned so much of that 20 points a game defense. Do you think, though, it could be that the offense has put them in such tough situations? It's pretty tough to play defense when your offense keeps – sending you back out there on the field, turning the ball over, right. you know. Well, that, that's a telling stat, too, is uh, when you just take a look at yardage. Because a lot of times, you know, the, the defense is just put in a bad situation. And uh, with, with a lot of times with turnovers. And, uh, you know, a lot of it depends on, on the weather situations. Um, you know, Notre Dame's first game, terrible weather right. situation. Same with Michigan. You know, we talked about that last week. But uh, it, it's, it all, you have to not only take the stats, you have to do a lot of analysis on that, too. So we got to go under it a little bit better. And, Michigan uh, State's the team in Michigan now. I mean, they've D'Antonio's taken over. He's out recruited the Wolverines. You know, Michigan State's now the pride. Do you really think so? I I do. I, I mean, you know, it's so tough because you know Ann Arbor and Michigan. But I, I think if Michigan State had a great year this year, it seems at least the the recruiting rankings, guys that follow it, seem to think that you know he's done a great job of recruiting when compared to Michigan. Um, but I, like I said, I think they're overrated. I don't think this team's a top 15 in the nation. I really don't. I think they got a great, efficient quarterback, you know, I, but I think they lost too many weapons on offense. And I think that instability on the offensive line is just going to be too much for them to remain a, a top 15 team. Yeah, I do have the concerns about the offensive line. Um, I'm not as concerned about receivers and tight ends. Uh, I always say... A good the, quarterback could overcome yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, the farther you are away from where the ball is snapped, the less you mean to the offense. So yeah. a lot of people talk about missing receivers or whatever. I'm more concerned about the center and the tackles and front, the guards. Yeah. Really. I, I agree. Uh, I would have liked... I was, I'm was. i sure there's going to be a lot of Michigan State money at a dog. I think they're going to get a lot of money line play as well. You know, people betting against them. I'm actually hoping that the money line doesn't mirror what the true odds should be as far as the point spread. And I could come in and scoop up some value by just taking Notre Dame on the money line and not having to lay that four and a half because I was hoping to get that, you know, three number. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get two and a half. There's no way. But I was hoping enough pressure from the public on that 15th ranked Michigan State comes in that I can get the three. But I think There'd be a lot of professional betters, a lot of sharp betters looking to back Dame at that key number. Um, so I'm hoping that there's enough Michigan State pressure on the books that the money line drops, and maybe I could find some value there. But I agree with your over as well. I think we're going to see some points um, from both teams in this game, and the defense is going to have some problems, especially since Dame doesn't have much game film on Michigan State because who have they played so far? You know, well, Youngstown gonna, State, Florida International. Look at what they did last year. That same coaching staff, basically. Um, a lot of a lot of guys who will pick up the USA Today game day or whatever. And I'm not saying they're a bit sure, better, sure. But they're going to put their twenty hundred dollars down, and they're going to see that the underdog is covered so well in this game. And then they're going to remember, 
oh, look at all these overtime games these teams have played, and they'll come in with that. So if enough of them come in, maybe it'll might get a shot. A little bit, right? So does that show Dame's a bad team that you know they've they're zero and two by a combined seven points? Would you credit that to them just not being a good team, not being able to win the close games, or are you still willing to give them a shot and say, you know, it was the the turnovers? And the luck factor. I mean, because turnovers are part of the game. If your quarterback is interception prone, you know, that's not going to regress. Right. If fumbles is maybe a different story if you're losing fumbles when they hit the ground. But if your quarterback's throwing INTs, if he's Vinny Testaverde, you know, there's nothing you could do. You're going to keep turning the ball over. So do you think it, it, by the combined seven points being 0-2 shows they're a bad team or just an unlucky team? I think at this point they're an unlucky team. Okay. But you have to be concerned if, it, if they are throwing the interceptions. We, we've talked about the fumbles in the past. That's a 50-50 prop. But if you are making bad decisions at the quarterback position. Which they've done. Which they have done. And uh, we're going to talk about a game in the NFL that's gone down to that too. But uh, I, I just think the better athletes are on the Irish side. I, I prefer the coach slightly. I, I like both coaches, to be honest with you. Yeah, me I think, too. I think me in too. their careers, they've both done a very good me job. Too. But uh, it's it's a situation where I want to go, if I'm looking at the side, I want to go against a team who hasn't played anybody yet. And you talked about the vanilla vanilla game planning. Can you really... Turn it on? Yeah, just turn switch? it on like that yeah. with, without even practicing these plays and games. I mean, you, you play Against top-level competition. Right, right, I agree. Right. That's a, I give a, a huge advantage to Dame there. You know, I like Notre Dame. I like your over. You know, that that's how I'm looking at this game. All right. So there you have it. Notre Dame, Michigan. Three cheers for old Notre Dame. Will they get it done or go to 0-3? Oh this is an important game for them. We'll be back covering two key games in the NFL. Great games to talk about.